When you know that you are queer, but your favorite drink is beer, that's gayish. You can bottom without stopping, but you can't stop going shopping, that's gayish. Oh, gayish, you're probably gayish. Well, life's just too short for narrow stereotypes, so oh, it's gayish. We're also gayish. It's gayish with Mike and Kyle. Hello, everyone in the podcast universe. This is gayish. The podcast that's like pretty much FFs with Billy Eichner. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're Twitter famous. You do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mike Johnson. I'm Kyle Getz. We're here to bridge the gap between sexuality and actuality. And you today... didn't. I, I was waiting for you. You were supposed to say, don't you mean BFFs? Oh, don't you mean BFFs? No. FS. F- <laughs> Look it up on <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Um, yeah, I po- I commented on my own, my personal Twitter and uh, Billy Eichner responded to me. And so now I'm g- uh, too good for the show. I'm announcing my formal departure. I'm Great. leaving to go just tweet at Billy Eichner full time. <laughs> Great. Yeah. How, um, how much, what does that pay? <laughs> you know, it pays less, actually less than this podcast. Because <laughs> it cost, cost me money. Um, and... In the comments, you know, everyone was like uh, mostly nice. And then some people, you know, were just like, uh, it's Twitter. So what do you expect? And then all of a sudden, Harvey Firestein is fucking defending me, like replying to people in the comments section. Yeah. I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Better than better than Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> I'll brag about either. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. I, um, We're going to talk about. Old white ladies. We are going to talk about old white ladies. I'm very excited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, are we going to talk about why later? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, okay great. Um, but, oh, but first, but first. But first, but first. I wanted to give... I have a few things up okay, top. Okay, great. If this is your first episode, skip ahead a bunch. You don't care about this shit. Um, yeah. Update on the cat litter box story. Oh, God. Uh, one of my friends, Ace, sent me this tweet thread that is like hey, there's more to this. Actually, there is, uh, this came from somewhere. Some, someone looked into, oh, sorry. The, the recap of this story is that people, Republicans, have been being like, look, kids in- sp- Identifying as cats. And yes. teachers have to put litter boxes so they can shit in a b- sandbox. Uh, yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, Which is not true. Schools have had to be like, we don't have litter boxes. Right, but there right. is some truth to this, which is interesting. And the truth is there was, I think they found like there was actually one place that had something, not a, a cat litter box, but something to this effect. And it's because of school shootings. They have a thing that is available for people to use the bathroom if needed in the event that they have to fucking lock themselves in a room because of a school shooting. Whoa. Yeah. And they found one other, I think, example of a, like a product that they sell for this purpose. So it's an in-classroom litter box in case the bathroom is unavailable because we're locked down because somebody is killing us. Yes. Republicans are... Have you ever been really, really frightened? Because I guarantee shitting is the last thing you want to do when you're super scared. Oh, I was going to say first thing you want to do. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean... I think the fight or flight response shuts down everyone's butthole. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, like you see, like, especially kids, like, pissing themselves when oh, th- they're scared. That's, well, okay. Yeah. That's true. You made it sad. You Well, <laughs> and literally it's like, I shit myself. I think yeah. you're exactly opposite. All I don't right. know what... Um, the Republicans are very good at marketing. They took this thing that would be easily Democrats could have grabbed this and ran with it being like, holy shit, look at this. This is gross that we have to have this for kids because of school shootings and guns that you won't take action on it. And instead, it has turned into the totally the opposite and continuing the uh, the um, uh, attack on trans and non-binary people yep. uh, and kids. So they're they're yep. great at this and it sucks that they're so good at this kind of marketing and spin while distracting and while distracting from the gun thing yes exactly yeah. exactly so that's sad um so now you are too uh some nicer things yeah uh we yeah. had a, a you planned a national coming out day for yeah. uh people to just come out and there were lots of people that came out to us that yeah. either did it for the first time or have not come out to many people and yeah it was really nice it was really nice yeah um I won't commit to doing it next year, but we'll think about I it. I want to do it every year. Okay, now. then let's was, do it. Yeah, it was, it was. It was very touching. It was very touching. Yeah, it was very nice, and not our typical like. There were a lot less dick and butt jokes, than, right? Than our normal. Not none. Like, but not zero. But not zero because we're still us. Because we're us. <laughs> um, we were also on. Speaking of coming out, we did a live stream just today, actually, for yeah, us. Yeah, we did. Uh, coming out tarot. 
Uh, if you want to, you can go to their Patreon, and we talked about queerness and tarot, and especially Mike and I both as like skeptics of any of most of anything of everything. Yeah. Uh, we talked about we. I think we had a, a cool conversation. So search Patreon for coming out tarot. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I got. I just realized I drank a bunch of coffee, so oh. I'm ready. Well, I mean. We were in danger of this being like a four-hour episode, so maybe we'll get it done in half. Oh, it'll the be time very quick, very, very quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only episode of us that anyone ever put on slower, to right. so that they can understand <laughs> me. Okay, what do you have? Uh, well, so we have a hundred words. Okay. Just uh, so everybody knows, at a, um, I forget what the fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. Yeah. Anyway, if, if if yeah, on Patreon, if you're if you're in in that tier or above, then you can send in one hundred words, and I will read them. And you can sign up for one month, and then cancel, so you can. Get get your hundred words in gtfo yep absolutely uh so if you want if you want to put things in my mouth mm -hmm. that's that's how you do it uh here we go things in your mouth hi kyle and mike hi. it's me again with another hundred words for reproductive rights to read for the podcast as elections are coming up and yes i read the rapper uh, kyle no i'm <laughs> not over it but i'm over it hi fellow gayish listeners did you know that abortion is literally on the ballot this year in a number of states in california michigan and vermont you get the chance to proactively protect abortion access in your state so if you're in california please vote yes on prop one michigan yes on prop three and vermont yes on prop five but also, in Kentucky and Montana, there are ballot measures against abortion access. In Kentucky, I urge voting no on Constitutional Amendment 2, and in Montana, no on LR-131. And of course, please vote for candidates supporting abortion access. Reproductive freedom isn't just for cis straight women, it's for us queers too. Thanks again for an amazing podcast. I'll be listening to most of October's podcasts when I'm driving to and around Michigan for my get out the vote road trip. So it'll be a nice way to calm my nerves before I knock on voters doors. Best, John. Oh, thanks. Thanks. That's great advice for all of us. Vote in your local elections. Yeah. And don't vote for assholes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Except with your penis. Um, One last thing. Yeah. It was our production assistant, Derek's birthday. Happy ha birthday, Derek. Happy birthday, Derek. Don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Thanks for being here. We no, you can, resp <laughs> you can you can actively respond if you Thank want. Thank you. <laughs> I'm blaming the coffee, but maybe not. Sure. Okay. Well, moving things along. <laughs> Here's the news. <laughs> Shut your mouth hole, it's time for your ear holes. News, news, news. I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Uh, I'm fine. Do you need? No, I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine. Do you need propranolol or something? I don't know what that is. Me neither, but I have a whole bunch of them <laughs> and it's supposed to calm you down. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Um, news the first. So, Miss California, Carrie Prejean Bowler a former Miss USA contestant has said that members of a local school board should be jailed because of an LGBTQ plus Halloween event. Wow. Yeah. Boo bash is what they're calling it. It's in San Diego. It's a California or San Diego, California Halloween party hosted by trans family support service and was initially endorsed by the Encinitas union school district. And, uh, Despite the fact that the school district isn't hosting the event, they were just talking about it, I guess, approving and posting a flyer for it. Hmm. Miss Miss California ha said that, that they should be put in jail. Quote, every single one of these board members, we called them out for exactly who they are. They're groomers. Hmm. There's that word. One more word that you have no idea what it actually means, but it's just trendy to say right now. Yep. Yep. In a normal world, they would be criminalized. They would be put in jail jail i'm excited that she also was very active against you know matt gates and other people that are known pedophiles within the republican party too oh wait no one ever does that they only attack people that don't actually do this thing that's right absolutely i'm so sick of like the whole thing i just yeah um it sucks it, it's a it's a coordinated attack on our community on the trans and non-binary community on kids who already are are more prone because of societal issues to uh, issues as a result of that and they're they're doing it to win a vote and it's disgusting that they are willing to sacrifice to attack a community that they i they do not give a shit about this right they are yeah. doing it to 
manufacture rage yeah. to manufacture rage which be, then becomes i watched the john oliver segment it's like it becomes real rage yeah. like it, yeah. they they stoke up their base so that they can get votes and they are they don't care about human people they just want to win things at any cost and it's disgusting yep yep absolutely well the the october 29th event is going forward it will feature fun games trick-or-treating a costume contest and a family-friendly disney villain themed drag show oh, i want to go to yes that. Yeah. um and uh, event organizer Kathy Molig said, quote, we're not going to back down from doing what we know is right and appropriate to support these youth and their families just because some people think they can use it as their mega piece to get talking points and get attention. I should have just waited for the rest of the story that also vocalized And that. now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, news the second? Yeah. So President Joe Biden has said that he will meet with Vladimir Putin at next month's G20 summit only if Putin is willing to discuss releasing Brittany Greiner. Oh, wow. Yep. Said, quote, look, I have no intention of meeting with him, but look, if he came to me at the G20 and said, I want to talk about the release of Greiner, I would meet with him, but that would depend. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I Like... Yeah, so if you haven't been following the Brittany Griner thing, she is an American basketball player who is in Russian prison for uh, possession of marijuana, which is super illegal, and Russians are real bad at, like, yeah. you know... A tiny amount or something that was... Or paraphernalia, some, like a, you know... Uh, a, yeah. Yep, she's a WNBA player, but was also playing in Russia because we don't pay WNBA players enough for that to be their, yeah. only, their yeah. whole career. Also basketball player she's very tall and all of the pictures of her mm -hmm. like being drug around are, are like just just she's just so, so much taller yeah. um uh any, anyway yeah so so apparently joe biden like not only knows who she is but definitely has her like high on his priority list of things that need to be discussed with russia and uh yeah she was sentenced to nine years and the united states has offered a prisoner swap but so far, nothing has come of that. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, Jean uh, she's family, said, quote, the Russians need to take the serious offer that we put forward on the table or make a serious counter offer to negotiate, but in good faith. So, yeah, the G20 is meeting um, in uh, in November. And uh, apparently that's Biden wants to talk about Brittany Griner if if Putin wants to dance. That. <laughs> I want to dance with Vladimir. <laughs> um, that's great that like our issues. That she, she's 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 also a family. That's part of why we're talking about it. And yep. like the LGBT issues are issues that affect LGBT people. As a to get get in the room, you have to be willing to discuss those. Otherwise, we're not even doing this. That's that's a cool yeah thing that I don't think that's. I, don't, I can't think of many things where it's like no LGBT issues or nothing. Also. We might start World War Three accidentally, you know. <laughs> so, but we, but we get we, credit for hurricanes. Why not nuclear oh, Armageddon? That, oh, that's true. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Can you imagine if? Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. Well, you know. Hopefully, hopefully that works. It's not going to. Putin's a <laughs> fuck face, dick bag asshole. Um, news the last. So this weekend, so yesterday, there were uh, Lauren Price and Karis Ardingstall, who are boxers participated in the first televised all-female uk boxing event okay wait is this they have boxing day is this boxing like punch you in the face or like boxing day great thank you for the clarification punch you in the face okay great also yesterday clarify another clarification yesterday was october 15th for us because it's sunday for us yeah also i celebrate boxing day by punching people yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I roll. Uh, anyway, so there was an there's an all female UK boxing event, and Lauren Price and Karis Ardingstall are talking about it, and it, they're noteworthy because they're also a couple. Did we wait? We did a an episode on UFC. It's episode blah, 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 and it was there was a lesbian couple that fought each other yeah i don't think that's them it's this is a different lesbian couple that's Th fighting each is, other this is boxing not ufc damn oh okay okay yeah yeah you're right okay yeah uh um so so uh karis artingstall said quote we don't hold back we literally just go at each other just as professionals when we're sparring we're there to try to improve each other we get out the ring and we laugh and smile about it wow her girlfriend lauren price said quote 
We punch the shit out of each other. <laughs> then we get out and we're all lovey-dovey. Wow. It's pretty special training with your best friend. We both <laughs> bounce off each other. I also realize I said lesbian, but I don't know there. They could be bi or pan or um, lots of other things. Yeah. There yeah. we are. That, that's absolutely true. That's, that's it's so complicated. I mean, it's not. Is it? <laughs> well. Um, anyway, God, so. Damn, so like, well, I, that, I mean, that's fine if we're different people, but I cannot picture just having no feelings about that afterwards. Right. Especially I played since one of you is the winner and one of you is the loser. I played hearts with my parents, and I like by the end of it, we were all a little tense, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I won. Oh, good for you. Thank you. Uh, they're both Olympians, and they said that Tom Daly has been a big help oh. for them, and that uh, they get a lot of attention from queer people and couples who feel inspired by them. And of course, there are trolls <laughs> online, but they don't let it get to them. Because they could beat the shit out of them if they needed to. Yeah, 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 yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I'm i sort of interested to hear uh, how all of that turned out and how well it was received. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was that was, uh, that was was yesterday. It was on Sky Sports. Anyway, that's the news. That's the news. Speaking of... People beating of this, the shit out nope, of each other? No, there was no <laughs> Sky. Speaking of the Sky, the people we want to throw in the air, I have no connection. I want to thank our new Patreon member, Grant... Kirkland, mm-hmm. who sounds like a like a superhero. Hello, Grant Kirkland. Yeah. I'm here to rescue you. Sky News. Sky News. <laughs> <laughs> I will be reporting on women beating the shit out of each other and then loving each other still. Uh, thank you, Grant. If you want bonus episodes content, we last month's bonus episode wasn't a full episode about flirting. This month it's going to be a full episode on cuddling. So, yeah, go to patreon.com slash gayish podcast. Do it. Do you want to talk about old white ladies? Let's talk about old white ladies. So the Why? reason, yeah, Why? The, 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 well, the reason this happened is uh, one of our gap bridgers, Jamie Pugh, wrote me and said, "Hey, would you do something for Angela Lansbury?" Because she is a lady that died recently. If you are like me and kind of have vague notions of that, yep. And and so we got to talking about that and and sort of fleshed the idea out a little bit and and said, you know, we wanted to, we definitely wanted to talk about her, but that there's a lot there that we wanted to talk about with regards to. What I perceive as gay white guy obsession with old white ladies, yeah, and and so here here we are, here we are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, do you, I mean that is that a good place to start? Thanks for the just suggestion, Jamie. Well, you're we're, we're blaming you for the <laughs> where this got to. We will blame you for the Angela Lansbury part, but yeah, do you want to start there, Mike? Yeah, sure. Okay, sure, sure, sure. So uh, f- first, I just wanted to start with a story. Okay. Uh, she was born in the 1920s. She hooked up with gay dudes. She was mostly known for a TV role later in life, mm-hmm. but was already a star in her own regard before reemerging on television, playing a no-nonsense strong character. I just described Angela Lansbury, Elaine Stritch, <laughs> B. Arthur, all in the same like Jessica there's Walter. a Jessica Walters there there is a pattern there that uh I I think there's something there and that's what I want to to dig at yeah and what always comes up I, th- I always think it's interesting when especially when these icons these amazing figures die I always look to see if it says gay icon we talk about gay icons yeah. that are not themselves gay and and why is that and there's something interesting there that uh, you uh, Sure. Well, I don't know what said about Angela Lansbury, but I've seen, you know, times when, you know, I'm like, wait, I know that they're a gay icon. I kind of expected that. But why? Right. Yeah. 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 It, and it, it's always it's always these like old don't give a fuck sassy old white ladies. Yeah. Right. Yep. And and um, so we can sort of pick apart why we've talked about before the fact that like on the divas episode and in golden, golden girls, girls yeah how like there's a strong female lead just there's something that speaks to our soul as mm-hmm. queer men about yeah. that some of which i think is just just attached to uh there's the glamour of it there's something about about that but also the i the queerness mm-hmm. of not conforming to the mainstream expectation that a woman's places in in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant or whatever yeah right yeah yeah the societal queerness 
the yeah i think that there's an added component though of like whatever the threshold is for old which we should totally talk about that that these women that we put on this pedestal all have a i don't give a fuck mm-hmm. edge to them yeah. of like they're they're old and cranky and get to say whatever the fuck they want and people instead of finding it offensive find it endearing and adorable it's yeah we we have uh, women white people old people all of those are the like like, combine that and that's the least offensive like we know that we assume black kids are actually like people assume they are older than they actually are we adult uh, there's a word for this adultify like uh, black kids or uh, the like old white ladies are the most you know that's the combination of all the things that you're like this is the least offensive or or um i don't know whatever like kind of people and then all of a sudden they're making sex jokes same fuck or being strong or being fucking annoying and or you know domineering and yeah that's part of why they can get away with it and still be endearing yep. somehow yep absolutely absolutely now one thing i did I, I pitched the idea for old white ladies as like the, the 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 episode topic what i i think i think the archetype that we're plugging into requires that they be older mm-hmm. and requires that they be a woman i wanted to challenge the white part mm-hmm. by thinking of other examples because white people dominate media and dominate culture and especially did in decades gone by. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense that way that this field that we're talking about would be primarily white ladies, but, and there's, uh, because there is and has been racism within the LGBT community. Uh, it would make sense to me that we would elevate white women more than black women or any other woman of color. Yep. That's not to say that there aren't, you know, you can, there, you can find lots of black women that, that we, you know, elevate, but it's, I, but I don't think to this frequency or to this degree or, or yeah, maybe just frequency, it's the number. It's Yeah. So, um, a couple of maybe examples come to mind, but it, it, they, they lean on the word old a little bit. You have to be flexible there. Okay. One that comes to mind is Felicia Rashad, and mm. she played um, Mrs. Huxtable on mm. The Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I view her as being sort of in this zone yeah. or zone adjacent. I don't know. What's your reaction to her as a? I, I completely agree. And also, Cosby Show was there. It's so hard for black media or any media with a minority character gay media to be anything other than categorized as like oh this is a black show or this is a gay show or this is a to just be a show that's not something we get to kind of do and the cosby show is one of those like oh white people would watch this and that's a shitty thing all in and of itself but to me that makes sense then that the lead mom she was able to kind of in spite of not having the white part she was still something that existed within the white ecosystem and was able to break through that kind of thing yeah 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 i i i agree i agree i'm what i'm trying to figure out is whether she just doesn't quite fit into the like list of names that we rattled off just Mm. a little bit ago of of like gay men are obsessed with her i don't know that gay men are obsessed with felicia rashad oh i like her or like nell carter kind of comes to mind i don't know who's she she was the like the sassy n- nanny character from Give Me a Break. Oh. You you would probably recognize her. Oh. I can't turn my I don't. shit. Anyway, but yeah, but none none really like rises to the, the level of this like old white lady hmm. archetype. Yeah. I also, I mentioned in our production notes leading up to it, I don't have a segment on it, but I think that that's what they were tapping into with Elena Tyrell on Game of Thrones. Hmm. That just like for her to look Queen Cersei in the face and and tactfully and artfully just be so cutting and yeah. so taking her down a notch it's that kind of giant middle finger coming from a cute old woman yep. thing yeah that that i i think makes that character compelling and yeah. i think that that's the same whatever it is that leads gay men to being into this archetype uh, yeah, absolutely. The word cutting is a very great one. Like that's key to all of this. Like, yeah. you, you know, whether it's the character they play or in real life in, in media, you see them not giving a shit or making comments that no one else would like cutting is a great word to describe them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Can I talk about the uh, all and we're talking about we're also talking about ones that died recently. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Um. So the the. I mean, key clutch one. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth II. Absolutely. Which also born in the 20s, right? Like 
Yeah. I, I, was she? I think so. She might have been born in the 1820s. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, how does she feel about LGBT people? I'm going to guess ickier than she let on. We'll see. I will oh. present the evidence and you... Dear listener, can decide for yourself. What? No, don't me. I'm going to decide. You're the dear listener. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> You're the only dear listener that can respond to me. So I guess that we'll do that. You know, when you go into Google and you type like, what is, and I was going to like typing in what is Queen Elizabeth II and the auto Google auto filled uh, last name. And I was oh. like, that's not what I was looking up, but I was like, oh, Windsor. What is, yeah, yeah. Her full name is Elizabeth Alexandra Mary Windsor. Wow. Oh, I just dead named her. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> That's so, oh, so thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sorry, and you're welcome. Um, okay, so in looking up, BBC has the British Broadcasting Company. The British Broadcasting Company of news fame, of fame doing the news in the British, uh, uh, had a quote from Manchester's first openly gay lord. A gay Lord Mayor. I <laughs> call him gay, gay Lord. Lord. Fuck. <laughs> First openly gay Lord Mayor. Uh, okay. His name is Carl Austin Bahan. I uh, would argue that if your title is Lord Mayor, Gay Lord, that's pretty gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah, you're already gay. Um, he said that I feel she genuinely cared about our community. So you know, valuing oh. what gay people say, especially gay British people say about the Queen, is important. So that's what he said in... If this whole thing with her dying and like the fallout from it has anything has told, taught me anything, is that how people feel about her was way more important than the things that she did. Mm, that, <laughs> so, yeah, it, I would hold on to that thought and feeling <laughs> and just see if that comes back around maybe by the end of this. Who, who knows? Uh, in 2020, he was awarded the OBE uh, for his service for charity, for LGBT equality, for the, um, working with the community in Greater Manchester. Um, and in 2021, there was an event, the 600th anniversary of, Man of the Manchester Cathedral. Don't worry about it. It's a cathedral and it's important. And the Queen request <laughs> requested that an lgbtq choir perform and um uh, this this gay lord mayor just, uh, said that that sends a powerful message that was one of his reference points of you know she did something meaningful for our community <laughs> she did she requested a choir of gays a whole choir a, a choir of gay angels <laughs> yeah so we yeah. gave it to her so i wanted to explore a little bit more of the actual facts so one important thing politically, she gave royal assent to things like the Sexual Offenses Act of 1967, which partially decriminalized same-sex relationships, mm -hmm. a uh, 2003 act that decriminalized gay sex completely, the Marriage Same-Sex Couples Act that legalized gay, gay sex marriage. Jesus. Hi, coffee. Welcome to my body. Um, <laughs> legalized same-sex marriage in England and Wales, which are different places that I know the difference between. Um, she... <laughs> she, yeah, <sure. laughs> so the uh, a royal assent which i had to look up is where the monarch formally approves a bill after it's been passed by parliament so that it will become law yeah that is a different thing than key, king or queen's assent uh, uh consent which happens during the process it's the we'll talk to you was while we're figuring this out to get input along the way yeah so this is a royal assent so she gave royal assent to all those things that are LGBT bills. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. What? Royal assent is just like all, almost all of the power has been taken out of the monarchy and is just a rubber stamp on like whatever parliament says this is law goes in front of the monarch. They don't really have any other option or choice but to sign it. Right. So the uh, royal assent has not been refused since 1708. Yeah. So I, I, what, where I'm going with that is I don't know if she gets credit for signing shit that she had to sign. But yep. Yeah. Yep. Hundo percent. That also means Section 28, which is their big, you know, gay preventative whatever law that uh, was passed in 1988. It barred schools from promoting teaching of homosexuality. That also means she gave her assent to that yeah, because yeah. it's a formality. Yeah. Other other things that happened during in May 2021, she announced a ban on conversion therapy during the Queen's speech. Great. However, does she she just kind of reads the speech that was given? That's not her doing it or enacting the laws. That's not her responsibility. Sure. Yeah. 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 Now, now there, I give a little more credit though because not only is it her speech to give, 
But then because that goes directly into the ears of the people that fucking love her, they then pressure their elected officials in parliament to enact that stuff. So mm -hmm. I, there's there's more still hard to measure, but I think there's still more like legitimate impact that's happening there. I agree. I agree. She's saying it and she's agreeing that like the, any word that comes out of the queen's mouth, you know, has been thought through and planned. Yep. In effect, what they ended up doing is outlawing or banning conversion therapy for gay and bi people and not trans people. Oh, yeah. All right. That's like that was recent, very recently in the news. Thanks, Boris. Yeah. Um, although Boris Johnson was very supportive of repealing gay conversion therapy. He sure. didn't when he was mayor of London. He like was like, I don't want this. This is uh, abhorrent, huh. which is like weird. Yeah. He wow. was supportive of it. Yeah. Supportive of repealing it. Oh, and we know he doesn't know any gay people. Look at that hair. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Did you just <laughs> talk to one homosexual. JBN. No, d leave him. Leave him as is. So, uh, Charles Charles Up Upchurch, a professor of British history at the Florida State University, said, quote, I just don't think it's right to ascribe to her the LGBTQ legislation that has passed and she has given her assent to as somehow reflecting of her personal opinion. She doesn't express her personal opinion on a lot of issues that are political. And for most of the history of LGBTQ rights, it has been very political and po uh, politicized and very partisan. So... You are speaking to, you are just, you could be a professor in the Florida State, whatever the fuck. Sure. Um, exactly what you said. I don't know that this is reflective of her, what she thinks, cares about, what, you know. So. Well, and as you've said a couple of times on the show, I'm pretty sure I'm already qualified to teach in Florida. Oh, so. absolutely. Boy, <laughs> it was so soon after you were born that you were pretty qualified to teach there. Yep. So a few more things that are like what she is, I put said in quotes, but like things that are a little bit more tangible. The Charter of Commonwealth, which is a charter setting out the values for the Commonwealth countries. Uh, the Queen endorsed it. It was rewritten or written in 2013 and it included in the charter. We are implacably. Is that how you say that word? Implacably? Implacably. Implacably? I don't. Okay. Opposed to all forms of discrimination, whether rooted in gender, race, color, creed, political belief, or other grounds. And some people are like, other grounds? That's sexual orientation. Cool. And it's like, Ew. so Peter. Uh, uh, so 2013. It's a. Oh, okay, go boy, ahead. 2013. You can put the word sexual orientation in there. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Peter uh, Tatchell, who's a uh, UK LGBTQ. LGBT activist, look him up, he's awesome. He said, quote, astonishingly, since she became queen in 1952, the words gay and lesbian have never publicly passed her lips. There's no record of her ever speaking them. So he's very critical of the monarch. Sounds like it. Yeah. Um, sounds like he deservedly is not, so. <laughs> he has not won an OBE. Well. BT dubs. Um, someone else, a influential gay journalist, Patrick uh, Shrudwick, said, quote, this charter isn't a fight for gay rights. It's a vague whisper muffled by the screams of gay people awaiting the noose. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. That was my soul that just passed through my <laughs> anus there. <laughs> In the 2017 Queen's speech, she said, quote, my government will take further progress to tackle the gender pay gap and discrimination against people on the basis of their race, faith, gender, disability, or sexual orientation. So finally, she did say the words. Great. In 2017, there are also rumors that personally, she didn't like, uh, she didn't care because of her religion, Christianity, and, and per personal beliefs. She didn't actually like gays. There were unconfirmed rumors that she said to gays, quote, when you two old queens have stopped gossiping, will one of you fetch this queen a gin and tonic? <laughs> Which in another context would be fucking hilarious, mm -hmm. but maybe not this. <laughs> And in 2018, there's that sense of humor everybody kept yeah, talking about oh, yeah. when she died. <laughs> Classic, quick witted. Um, in 2018, Ollie Roberts was the first openly gay footman to the queen. He quit because they said he was, they, they demoted him. Be what? Just footman? Uh, uh, yeah, in our episode on feet, that yeah. never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a footman fetish? He's, um, I would, you know. Well, we don't have to. Okay. He's, you know, okay. Um, he was, he he quit because he was demoted for quote, courting publicity. And my interpretation of this is like, he posted a thing on social media that referenced him, like his job or his first public appearance in his role that got a lot of attention. I think that happened and they're like, oh, you're getting too much publicity. So I think it's pretty shitty that they demoted him. Yeah. So yeah. all of that is still kind of, I don't know. I don't know how much you can ascribe to it. So the biggest thing is the Guardian investigated documents that they say um, that 
that the monarch, quote, negotiated controversial clauses exempting the queen and her household from laws that prevent race and sex discrimination. Mm. This is an exemption that is in place today, including an exemption to the 2010 Equality Act, so very recently has been negotiated and, and continues, that uh, that act uh, pre- protects workers for discrimination based on sexual orientation, race, religion, age. The uh, Buckingham Palace did not dispute that that exemption was in place. They said there was a separate process to elevate discrimination cases that happen with their their employees, their employees. And when uh, the Guardian asked for what that process was, they did not respond. Sure. Okay. There's there's a process. Where... The process is shut the fuck up. <laughs> Scream into this bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So at the at the funeral, uh, I don't know, one more thing. One of the attendees was Hsien Chu. He also was the recipient of an OBE in 2022 because uh, he founded the Proud Voices, a network of LGBT choirs. Great, great. Uh, in the UK and Ireland, which are also different places. The <laughs> queen, he, um, so he said, I wanted to read two of his quotes to try to be fair to him. He said, so, so he, you know, inviting an LGBT person, especially one that, I don't know, they fucking love gay choirs, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he said, quote, the queen is one of those people that has managed to transcend boundaries and differences between us. And that is truly inspiring. Cool. He was cool. very excited to Great. be there and be invited. He also said, quote, I often think the queen of the queen in terms of her ceremonial duties rather than who she is as a person. And it was really touching to see her family there. Oh, my God. <laughs> the sickest burn <laughs> of the queen you can get away with in yeah. public. <laughs> so that's. What's your read after all of that? I, I think my my read is especially what he said. Like, yeah, she was ceremonial. Yeah, she did, and she didn't. We know that someone like Princess Diana went against the conventions and stuck her neck out for LGBT people. Yeah, so we can't just blame it on oh that's just convention because the queen can do whatever the fuck she wants, and yeah. she decided to stay very neutral or privately seems like actively trying to have this uh, the ability to discriminate if they want to against lots of people including race and and sexual orientation uh so it's not that she was outright it's seemingly outright either homophobic but she didn't do anything to to help us except for fucking higher choirs and whatever uh so uh, yeah Yeah. so i don't um it maybe in the uk it's more of a thing but like she fits so many of the check boxes of what should be gay icon status, right? Yeah. Well, but, but, and we, I mean, even when I like said some shit about the royal family, like there are people that are very like, well, gays that will jump in and defend it. Gays love the publicity, the, you know, the glamour, like the Kim the Kardashian kind of thing of these, like, let's get into the drama and all this stuff. When there's a baby, everyone like fucking loses their shit or a wedding. Like yeah. gays love the, the royal family and shit. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, Every every time I see a, a scholar on a, like a documentary or on a news program that's talking about I don't know this photograph of the sideways glance that the queen gave her third cousin and what it means like, yeah it's like just homos every yeah. time just <laughs> just a, oh. every single time a really like clearly anal retentive homosexual like yes. does all of that kind of like analysis and stuff she and. Anything she does to, uh, to defend her slightly, I'm, I don't care to defend her as a whole, to defend her slightly, anything she does, anything she says, people interpret the news prints shit good and bad, yeah. like she, like anything she does will be met with overanalyzation and people complaining about her. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she's been in, she had been in that her entire life. So, but I have, I no longer feel the need to defend people that are neutral, especially people in positions of extreme power like that. Sure. So in the past, I probably would have said, look, she, you know, she wasn't, she was neutral. So that's fine. And the, I, I have now kind of come around to like, uh, that's not, that's not good enough that I will not give you any respect for just being neutral. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. And also an important part of a machinery of colonialism that was n- not good for, the world for a really long time yeah and it's hard to extricate her from that legacy and yeah i very and, much like i just went exclusively down the lgbt yep. path but like yeah if you just colonialism the racism the you know uh, there's such a bigger thing there that i can't even get into but there's also super fucked up yeah. yeah 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 she's yeah. a part of yeah what do you want to talk about angela lansbury yeah let's do it another 
English woman. Oh. Did you know that Angela Lansbury is English? I know so little about her. It's... I, I would be embarrassed, but I don't know her enough to know whether to be embarrassed or not. You know, like that's how little I know about her. Well, did she write murder? She, she, well, somebody did. Someone. Yeah. <laughs> Someone. <laughs> uh, Dame Angela Bridget Lansbury. Oh. Uh, she was Irish British. Those are two different places. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, she was born in 1925 and uh, is super duper famous and she 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 died last week so that's a little bit why we're why we're doing this but uh she worked for eight decades she's most famous for murder she wrote to younger people but was already kind of a superstar before that she uh she won six tonys including a lifetime achievement award holy shit six golden globes a laurence olivier award uh, the Academy Honorary Award. She was nominated for three Oscars, 18 Emmys, oh. and a Grammy. She never won an Emmy? She never won an Emmy. Wow. And uh, she never won a Grammy, so she didn't EGOT, mm. but she was close. She was yeah. nominated. She in, was EGOT in, nominated? Yeah, EGOT nominated. And so uh, a, a, a couple of things. First, she ended up in Los Angeles. Okay, I like... This is going to be my gayest for <laughs> ever, for forever. But like, I kind of prepared most for her for this episode yeah. because I got on this like rabbit hole. I read a whole bunch of her biography. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like, like a book. Like an actual <laughs> a, actual book. I have I have screenshots of parts that I've clipped out of her biography because I got. Oh, son of a bitch. That's how excited I am about Angela Lansbury. Just <laughs> spilling shit, sp- spilling shit everywhere. Just jizz of soda everywhere. Yes, thank you. Um, she's she's super fascinating, and in the interest of like not having this be a four-hour episode, I'm going <laughs> to cut down to like the gayish okay stuff. She originated the role of Mame, and apparently that was sort of her in the the musical version of Mame, and. That is sort of her, what made her most famous among the gays. Anytime you're like a musical theater sensation, like mm. that gets you a lot of like gay cred points. Yep. That very much happened with her. But going back a little bit from there, when she moved to Los Angeles in the 1940s, now keep that in mind, your like framing of, of when that was. And uh, she apparently had gay friends she had gay friends in the 1940s so in the 1940s apparently gays were were drawn to her even then Mm. um her brother eddie said that quote her personality just knocked them out and in hollywood they were a lot more open than in new york Mm. michael koslick for instance lived with two other german exile homosexuals in the garden of Allah hotel they came to all our parties and were quite open about their situation and it's, it's interesting, like, we're talking about why are gays uh, attracted, like, these are women that gays were attracted to forever. Like, this is not a new thing that gay men are attracted to these these women. It's interesting that that's a, you know, persist. Right. Yeah, absolutely. A- absolutely. And and uh, Angela herself uh, said, quote, it only made it delightful that a great many of our interesting friends were gay. <laughs> I... They were great company. Yeah. And uh, that does I I love and hate this part. I think being gay has made me more interesting. Yeah, like if I didn't have a gay thing, I w- I wouldn't have struggled as much or learned as much or done the show or I don't know. I just don't. I it's inexorable. I guess no, it is. But it's just yeah. I don't know. I dislike that. I know I have other good qualities probably. Probably, probably. <laughs> No, you do. You for yeah, sure. Yeah, no, but no, like, I, 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 I also, I also think that there is a certain amount of freedom that comes with being gay that we've talked about. Yeah, a number that's of times, true. right? Like you, you can sort of give yourself permission to do all kinds of things that I, I think straight guys don't really have the option. That is true. Yeah, if you are willing to be out, you know, even to your friend Angela, you are now opening yourself up to be a more open, connected, you know, do more interesting things. Yeah, yeah. It's not the, it's not the being gay. It's you know what it represents in society and what it and leads you open to yep yep uh angela angela lansbury in an interview when she was 88 years old said quote i am very proud of the fact that i am a gay icon (laughs) it's because of the role i played in mame she was just every gay person's idea of glamour 
Everything about Mame coincided with every young man's idea of beauty and glory, and it was lovely. Hmm. And that's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, so all of that is despite the real focus of the gayishness of her, and part of the reason that I f- fell into this like giant hole uh, 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 of, of her life. She married a full-on gay dude. <laughs> they were they were married for less than a year. His name was Richard Cromwell. They started dating uh, not that long after she moved to Los Angeles and was connected to this like network of gays that wow. that were friends that were coming to their parties and whatnot. So you're not reading into it like he was ended up being. Oh, oh okay. I'll I'll get there. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'll let you tell this. Uh, so yeah, his name was Richard Cromwell. Uh, uh he. She called him Roy. That's what he wanted her to call him. But uh, they they started dating, and he had seen her mom play parts in local plays and then uh, went and saw her perform in The Picture of Dorian Gray hmm. and then wanted to meet them both and basically stalked her and got her phone number. Wow. Then... He was apparently, she said that he was, quote, gorgeous, blonde, and suntanned with a beautiful and resonant voice. He was funny, too, and better still, the admiration went both ways. Mm -hmm. He thought I was the prettiest thing on two feet. Mm -hmm. So he was also on contract at Columbia Pictures, so they were sort of like an acting power couple kind of a thing. And he, through all kinds of parties, maintained a lovely Mm -hmm. flower garden, spent a lot of time interior decorating their home he had his own kiln and made ceramics and life masks which that's when you put a mask over somebody's face to get like the impression the impression of their face but you put straws up their nose so they can breathe um he was 16 years older than angela she was only 19 at the time um so they they had again lots of lots of gay friends in their in their circle and uh, all like movie people, and then they got they got married after dating for a while in 1945. And uh, in front of a justice of the peace, they had a honeymoon in Lake Tahoe, and he gave her a Steinway grand piano for a wedding present. And later on, uh, she said, "Quote: I never really thought through what I was doing getting married. I just carried away with the idea." And then less than a year later. After uh, he'd he'd had a bunch of like health issues, headaches, and had kind of a drinking problem, but a few months later she came home to find his car gone, his closets and drawers <sighs> empty, and a note was left on the piano. I'm sorry, darling, I just can't go on. God didn't say why he couldn't go on or what prompted his departure. He simply disappeared. This was a storyline in Sex in the City. Was it? There's a post-it note that was like, "I'm sorry, I just can't," or something. Oh. Wow. Well, that's Angela Lansbury's I, fucking life. Apparently. Which came first? <laughs> Sex in the City or Angela Lansbury? Yeah, that's toss up. D- yeah, <laughs> historians can't decide. Yeah. Um, she went next door to their gay friend Jerry's house. Oh, gay friend Jerry. They probably referred to him as such. Asking him, like, what went wrong? Where did Roy go? Why did he go? <laughs> Quote, he had no answers, <laughs> nor did anyone else. Huh. Uh, so... So I thought you were going to say he was at gay friend Jerry's house. No, <laughs> okay, no, 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 he's not there. Okay, no, um, but but she was she was crushed and she yeah. went through this whole like thing and like I totally like I have an ex wife that mm-hmm. I wonder what it was like for her when yeah. I left because I'm just as famous as Angela Lansbury. That none of that makes sense. <laughs> no, I, you you were on track at the, like the first <laughs> half of that. I was with you. Uh, she kind of went crazy. She tracked down his psychiatrist. Dr. Bertram Froman and uh, quote I just wanted him to explain what it was that had gone wrong what it was I didn't understand how many of us have had someone a grinder or someone block us and we're just like just why why just I just need to but I yeah maybe don't seek out their psychiatrist yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so she brought up his sinus attacks his headaches his drinking uh, she said that he listened but said little because of professional <laughs> ethics. Okay, great. <laughs> and uh, uh, But he did tell her he didn't leave because of anything wrong you have done. Mm. Dr. Froman told me, quote, you are the most balanced person. You have no problems. You see things in a sane adult way. You are not in any way an emotionally disturbed 
person. He said to her as she hid in a bush outside his office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so she said that she got this feeling that, quote, everyone knew something that they did not want to tell me. Huh. And uh, she'd asked all of their friends again, and, and, and she hadn't yet asked her mom huh. why. And uh, she never asked her mom and, and, and thought that, quote, perhaps she was afraid that she had information that I did not care to hear. Wow. So uh, the truth dawned on her. She thought back at a rage about her meeting with Roy's psychiatrist. And, uh, and, and she said, quote, he just didn't have the courage to tell me that my husband was a homosexual. He never said your husband is a homosexual and therefore he's incapable of having a relationship with a woman, sexual or otherwise. Uh, he implied that Roy wanted to have a relationship with me and just couldn't. But Dr. Froman never really said anything to me that helped. And there I was absolutely shattered. Everyone knew he was gay, but me. But mom had to have known. And her brother in the biography, her brother Bruce agreed Quote, why not? Eddie and I both knew, the other brother. Mm -hmm. uh, she might have gone along with it because she wanted to keep her relationship with Angie intact. But but yeah, so in August of 1946, after 11 months of marriage, she obtained a divorce uh, on the grounds of incompatibility. Uh, there was a brief um, like scandal. There was gossip about what had gone down and a rumor that she had stumbled on him bone and another dude mm. but quote that was absolutely made up she said homosexuals like that cliche <laughs> but it only happens that way in the movies yeah. um she finally concluded that he had married her in the hope of changing his sexuality that hits home yeah. and uh anyway she says quote i never resented him for it and we would become and remain friends uh which apparently they like hung out and were friendly after that and he was with dudes always on the dl but oh. because of industry stuff but like he was but so she kind of knows she knows he was for sure gay oh, okay okay for sure gay wow and um yeah so anyway that's that was her her first marriage huh. uh she would get married later and and have a, a family and and whatnot but yeah, the, all of that was from Balancing Act, the authorized biography of Angela Lansbury written by Martin Gottfried in 1999. I, I kind of want to read the whole thing now just yeah. because I was I was super into just her and her life and what's going on and, and the like the weird parallels that I can draw with 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 my own. Um, but yeah, and then she was on Murder, She Wrote. So she kind of like disappears except for uh, Beauty and the Beast, which she's known for being Mrs. Potts in, oh. in the animated film Beauty and the Beast. She plays the teapot. Okay. You, okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and, and she was on, on Murder, She Wrote uh, for, for 12 years. And that's what a lot of her Damn. Emmys are for. And uh, nominations. Uh, yeah, nominations. <laughs> Emmy nominations are for. Yeah, absolutely. But, but uh, yeah, gays love her. Wait, I want to go back to like yeah. you. I mean, n now it makes sense why you say you like spent a lot of time kind of delving in why that story would speak to you. How, how do you feel about seeing it? I mean, you were you were seeing it and telling it from her side, which mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. were you were on the other side. What what did that did that make you feel or think anything? Um, I like the fact that. Uh, I mean, yes, feel all kinds of things, right? Like, the, like for the longest time after my first marriage, I had this like, oh, I tricked her. Mm -hmm. Everything was a lie. None of my feelings were real. I have deeply, horribly, irrevocably hurt this woman. Um, and, and it's all my fault. And I deserve whatever misery I get because of mm -hmm. what I did to her. And she kind of postured it that way too, which is part oh of the ugliness God. of the divorce. Yeah. But, uh, seeing that there's another way that that can go down because mm. he he left her in a very traumatic way i i left her in a very traumatic way um but uh she did okay with it mm. it's it wasn't a foregone conclusion that she would hate him forever and yeah. and that she didn't understand it mm. and um so it was it was like what i sort of wish i could have had mm. but then again i don't i don't want to be friends with my ex so right, i don't right. know anyway Huh. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's rough because it is hurtful. It is unfair to the person 
that you married. And also like whose fault is that? Partially this is, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be advocating for (laughs) rights and acceptance of LGBT people for fear that they may marry our straights. But like, but Hey, remember straight people, cis het people, it does affect you too. We want people to be out and living their truth and it, helps everyone in society yep. like you know there's there's both how you know how much do you prescribe to the individual versus you know they were forced into that through society and i would assume so many people are like you and and initially just blame themselves and, and treated themselves horribly too, too far far too harshly yep 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 yeah it's rough and i i hope that it's a thing that happens less and less as yeah. as things continue and gay rights expand and acceptability of gay uh, identity continues yeah. so um because it really is it, it's sort of tragic for everyone involved yeah. right yeah and so talk about it we don't talk about this as a reason that gay people have mental health issues and struggle with things someone saying you have ruined my life mm-hmm. and you, and it is your fault at, like that so especially someone you were married to or anyone that's that close to you that's a big you suck like you're a horrible person that is i it sounded like like trying to extricate yourself from that feeling yeah her best friend called me and said all of those things almost verbatim wow yeah 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 it's a lot oh it was a lot also i kind of needed that at the time Mm -hmm. that like added fuel to the fire of like Oh, get the fuck out of this! Mm. Like I, I turned that into sort of anger and mm. and helped drive the wedge faster. Mm. So, interesting. Anyway. Yeah, huh. yeah. Angela Lansbury, she's super dead. She's defo dead. <laughs> Speaking of people that are old white ladies and married to people in the theater, mm-hmm. in the theater, mm-hmm. Jessica Walter. Yeah, she died. Yeah, she did. Uh, a while though, a while back though, right? Like eight yeah. years ago. No, 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 like this year. Who am I thinking of? I do not know. I'm thinking of Elaine Stritch. Oh. Who we can also talk about. <laughs> uh, I will just met Jessica Walter, I think all those things you said, there are lots of people that fit those. She fits this. She is perfectly fits this. Um, older woman, she's extremely talented. Mm-hmm. And she, um, in, in their uh, tribute to her, the Variety Fair called her, uh, it's a, it was the our title of the article was R.I.P. Jessica Walter, patron saint of shitty mothers, oh, because nice. the character yeah, 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 she played, yeah. especially on Archer and and um, Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Mm-hmm. I think there's something really interesting. What I uh, two things I want to mention about Jessica Walter. One is, I think so many of these women are people that we could say. You think you know of, of maybe Barbara Streisand or Cher, or, uh, these other women that that we're not talking about are people that our take away your gay card worthy, you know, are yeah. are that, that, uh, that is a person that someone may in response to, I don't know who that is. Say that. Yeah, sure. For Jessica Walter, her recent popularity, all the things about her death mentioned for sure, rest development, Archer and her previous work. But there is a world in which she didn't get those roles and you don't know who she is. Yeah. And I, I think what I, what, what this reminds me of, she is all these, she was, uh, um, nominated for like being in a play she was nominated she was has won an emmy she was in love boat and wonder woman and flipper and svu she was in all this shit and if she didn't get these more recent roles there's a world in which she fades on into obscurity yeah, 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 yeah. and no one knows but then they for, you know there's some women that are able to stay in the entertainment industry and keep keep it up and then those are the people who are like you don't know who she is it's like you don't who do you know from a hundred years ago like right. this, these yeah. people are meaningful to you and that's important and you don't remember people that were important to other people that are older that are that came before that that existed during that same time and just didn't for whatever reason have roles recently like right yeah she reminded me just her kind of career and especially the recency of some of her big things it just reminded me that uh, of that kind of like just stop don't just if you want to teach people about people that you care about awesome but do it in a way that doesn't diminish the other person yep absolutely yep be nice everybody yeah be um, into what you're into speaking of be nice i want to give you the top five lucille bluth quotes great yes i, love I read it. a bunch and then i picked my top five so I love it. yeah number five this was on every single list that I looked up. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, number four. I want to cry so bad. 
I don't think I can spare the moisture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was before her conjugal visit. God bless her. I don't know, right? Number three, her daughter in the show, um, uh, 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 Ellen, Portia Rossi mm-hmm. says, I have I the, have afternoon, the free. afternoon free. And Jessica Walter replies, Really? Did nothing cancel? <laughs> <laughs> That's just like this cutting, yeah, just yeah, kind of yeah. like. Um, uh, number two, everything they do, talking about gays. Everything they do is so dramatic and flamboyant. It just makes me want to set myself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was after, in the first episode of the show of Arrested Development, she said, look what the homosexuals have done to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And my favorite, my very favorite Jessica Walter quote that I use, uh, and I use this gif, she's very gifable. Yeah, yeah, what yeah, you, yeah. What you gif, you get in return. What was the, thi- the, the thing you said? I don't know. It's, oh, it was like, it's the gift that keeps on gifting. It's the gift that's, keep, <laughs> this gift keeps on gifting for sure. Not gifting furries, put it, be chill. Yeah. My favorite quote of hers. I don't understand the question and I won't respond to it. <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I don't understand the question and I won't respond to it. God, gays fucking love gifts. Like gifts, she will live on in gifts, uh, right. which is such a weird thing. Like how would you know when she played like fucking, what was it? it um, Amy Prentice that she, in the 1970s that she'd be a gift. Like how right, could yeah. you even explain that to a person? <laughs> so that's just a little bit about Jessica Walter. That's so great. Yeah. I love her. And, and, and like that character, Lucille Bluth and, and uh, in, in Archer, I, I forget what her, I, Mallory Archer. Mallory Archer. Yeah. Uh, these are two of my. I love these two shows. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and such such an amazing character. That's exactly the 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 plug that we're talking about for the the, the episode. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a a little bit. We're going to talk about Judy Garland at the Patreon segment. Um. But uh, I I had mentioned Elaine Stritch. Mm-hmm. Very similar vibes in Thirty Rock, mm-hmm. which for a lot of people is like the only role they know her in. That's that's me. But uh, she, had, I did say I would quit the show if you didn't mention her in Thirty Rock. Well, so I'm I'm going. I'm, you I, did, yeah. I, and at first, just so I could get that out of the way and then move on. To yeah, what yeah, I really yeah. Yep, to talk yep, about that, fair, fair. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Yeah, a lot of people only know her from from that, but she was a theater uh, superstar. She debuted in uh, on Broadway in the musical Loco in 1946. Damn. And she originated the role of Joanne in Company, which is like one of the biggest shows uh, of all time, Stephen Sondheim. Hmm. And uh, it keeps having all of these revivals and, and whatnot. It's really funny, too, because that was that was 1970. Yeah. And when I went back to listen to The Ladies Who Lunch, have you heard I've that I've heard song? of that. I don't know. Oh, yes. I looked that up because of her. Yeah, yeah. Here's to The Ladies Who Lunch. Yep. Um, everybody laugh. Um, she originated that role. And I went back and I... I, I now I want you to hear you, it. Oh, okay. It's been a while. I can't. I can't even think of it in my head. But I, there was one point in time. I think I was just looking up. I love looking up what people have won Emmys. That's like a personal passion of mine. Okay. Okay. But so she's won. I think she won an outstanding guest actress in Thirty Rock. That wouldn't surprise me. Or at least, at she, minimum, yeah, she was nominated. But that was her third Emmy. Okay. For C- Colleen Donaghy, uh, she had won an Emmy previously in '93 for a guest role on Law and Order. And in 2004, for a documentary of her one-woman show, Elaine Stritch at Liberty. She was big enough to have like a fucking one-woman show. She was that, yeah, that was huge. That made it to TV so that she could yeah, get an Emmy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, she, she, she originated the role of Joanne in, in Company. The, the reason that I wanted to play this clip, though, was uh, I went back to listen to her do Ladies Who Lunch. I had seen on YouTube her do Ladies Who Lunch in like a benefit thing, but she was like older. She was like in her in her 70s or 80s uh, in that recording. And then I also saw Patti Lapone do Ladies Who Lunch in front of her, which oh, that's God. like, that's how big Patti Lapone's balls are to be yeah. just like, like this was your role. You started it. Yeah. I'm going to melt it right in front of your face. It reminds me of Kelly Clarkson performing in front of Reba. Right, exactly. And, heal- and fucking <laughs> yeah. healing yeah. it. Yeah. But like to, yeah, I can't imagine. Um, but I thought, okay, 1970. So that's like 50 years ago. That's around that Stonewall was a year before. Yep. Yeah. It, uh, exactly right. And um, so I thought 50 years ago, what does her voice sound like? I bet it's totally different. Because she does have in 30 Rock, you know, kind of a, like a deeper rasp. 
I'd like to propose a toast. Oh God, no! It's the same Z's. <laughs> That's her at forty-five years old. <laughs> Here's to the ladies who lunch. That's just her voice. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was like, I was like, I, I figured like, oh, you know, you get older and your voice changes. Yeah. And she was like playing it up to be this like crotchety character. No, that's how she fucking yeah. sounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, it's it's super super interesting. Anyway, do all these women also have a little bit deeper of voices? Because Jessica Walter also had kind of a little bit of a not not like that, but yeah. Uh, oh uh, yeah 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 yeah. Well, co- okay. Huh. Here's a tie-in. Here's like uh, I'll, uh, B. Arthur. I'll, I'll speed it up. Oh. The B. Arthur connection was that uh, she was in the running for the role of Dorothy Bornack in <gasps> Golden Girls and uh, went went like head to head and lost to B. Arthur. Can you imagine almost getting that role and just looking back and being like, "Fuck!" Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, I wish I was slightly. I can't imagine just barely missing out on that, and then it's just. God, oh my God, I'd be so pissed at myself. So in one of her last interviews, she said, on losing the role of Dorothy Sporneck in Golden Girls, quote, my feelings were very hurt by that, but I'm awful glad I didn't do it. I could have made a lot of money if I played ball, but I didn't want to play ball, and I didn't want to play sitcoms for the rest of my life, and that's what I would have done. And she praised B. Arthur's acting talent and quipped, quote, but I wouldn't want to be her. She's dead. So I'd rather be me now. <laughs> That's the shit. Yeah. That's the shit. That's <laughs> There's also I what I want to get better at just in my personal life is whether it's making a decision or things happening, there can it can't shitty things can happen, sure. Also, there could be these just work out two different ways. They're not better or worse. They're not they can be a little bit harder or not, but like, it's not, this is the right. And this is the wrong way. There are yeah. just different ways that things can go. And I so often, you know, I was just talking about like, Oh, that would suck and live you, with you for the rest of your life. And she's like, no, I decided to do things, yep. you know, like I want to do other things. Yep. Absolutely. And, um, I, I think that's, that's also, there's a lack of desperation there that also fits this, like, just this, like big personality thing that we're attack, a- attracted to. Yes. As it's gay men. Like, well, yeah, that was hard. And also fuck them. You know, right. that kind of vibe of like, <laughs> I do whatever the fuck I want anyway, then. Yep. Absolutely. So, uh, then just to like complete the circle, B Arthur also played Mame after Angela Lansbury. And they were actually really close friends oh as a God. result of that. So like there's a connection. Those three women are connected yeah. through like their careers. And, and they were all, in a polyamorous relationship with the queen. Sure. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Did, uh, what are the golden girls, but a polyamorous relationship? Angela Lansbury must have played the queen at some point. You know, maybe I mean, the queen's speech. That was not a movie. Yeah. Anyway, there like that's, we can stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love what I episode ends with it? Just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> not with a sigh, but a whimper. Um, I maybe I think in the Patreon segment I also want to just mention Jessica Walter and her interview with the New York Times about the rest of development cast because she fucking talked about Jeffrey Tambor while he was in the room and got no support from the men got and she just still was you got to have this tenacity that you shouldn't have to have to be a woman in this industry and maybe that's another part of older women in this industry is they've gone through some shit yep. being women and hopefully again things are not Hopefully they've gotten better. There's still plenty of issues for women, but also they've been through the shit to get there. Yeah. Like when we talked about Betty White, just she was like, this didn't happen to have a woman decide to work in Hollywood and be a producer and not. And so like they, they have just been through the shit and we, uh, you know, we see that in respect. They have to go through it. And uh, in Jessica Walter, a few of her like obituaries, people were like, and you know, she's famously stood up to Jeffrey Tambor's and talked about it. It's like, God, like uh, the treatment of women in the industry has to be part of her story now. Right, yeah, like yeah, that yeah, never yeah. happens to a man. He'd survived this thing when it's like, that's not, that doesn't have to be part of you are recognized for your work. Not this thing that happened to you. I think there's something there that we can also connect with, unfortunately, but there's a shared kind of trauma or struggle or, or whatever that we go through. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
I'll, I'll segue then and, oh and leave you with God. this this quote that yeah. uh, about Angela Lansbury. That says this is her biographer talking about what it was like to interview her. Okay, because she like gave him a bunch of access to her life to write this this biography. Yeah, she told me at the outset, I want it to be believable and not a whitewash. I've got my problems, and I know that I'm not the easiest person to live with. When she read the manuscript, she certainly did tell me where she thought it was wrong or simply too invasive of her family's privacy, but never, not once, did that relate to herself, personally or professionally, hmm. nor did she ever complain about how she was being characterized. It was the privacy of her husband, her children, and her grandchildren that concerned her. As for herself, she has a personal aversion to flattery. <laughs> After one particularly draining back and forth, I half-joked that I'd send her two dozen roses in the morning. Quote, Don't give me that bullshit you're dealing with a 74-year-old battle axe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking plus four battle axe there. Yeah, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, did we do it? I don't know why or what we did, but we certainly... We talked about a bunch of old white ladies. We shit in the litter box <laughs> this time. <laughs> you're welcome, Republicans. You're, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sh- oh, Meow? Yeah. <laughs> the, that was a joke in 30 Rock. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. Let's talk about that on the break. Let's talk about <laughs> Tina Fey in fucking 30 years or whatever. Yeah. I don't know how old she is, but... <laughs> Let's take a break. Let's take a break. This is the part where Mike and Kyle take a break. So are we back? We're back. We're back. Unlike unlike all these women. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. Uh, we're going to do our gayest and straightest. We're going to do our gayest and straightest, but first... Our website is gayishpodcast.com. Join our communities on Discord spaces or our Facebook group. Otherwise, we are at Gayish Podcast. Our hotline, you can send us text messages or leave us voicemails, is 5855-GAYISH. That's 585-542-9474. Standard rates apply. Leave us your gayest and straightest, y'all. Ooh, yeah. We need to play more of those. Um, Our email is gayishpodcast at gmail.com. And our physical mailing address is post office box 19882, Seattle, Washington, 98109. Uh, real quick, local gay bar review. Uh, this time I'm going to talk about the George. In, the George in Dublin, Ireland. Wow. Uh, it was a um, it's it's a it's a decent sized space, and uh, I took my my friend Kelly uh came with and um watched a drag show. Oh, cool! And uh, Irish Irish drag show. Uh, Irish drag show. It How was, was that? Uh, exactly the same. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think a little uh, uh, gaudier than at least the Seattle Queens that I'm familiar with. That's cool. And uh, But I think that the highlight was there was a dance-off, an amateur dance-off, <gasps> and there was a dude that did Rain on Me by Lady Gaga, and he full-on like immediately like laid on the ground like she does at the beginning of the video so he was just like like was in that weird contorted like position and yeah. like lip syncing yeah and so did he crawl again did he, like she does the thing where she bangs her um hand like fists against the floor she's like fucking crawling and knives are falling in her he did the whole thing he did the Damn, whole thing get it he did um uh, he even did Ariana Grande's horrible dancing <laughs> um, <laughs> Which it was, was basically just bouncing just, and flailing arms yep kind of synchronizingly yep uh it, it was nice that there was a stage there i enjoyed the drag but it's kind of laid out weird and mostly had to watch it on a monitor because mm-hmm. there's like a very very limited seating mm. it was fun but uh three and a half dildos okay okay yeah uh gay sisters let's do our gay and straightest uh i'm happy to go first okay the straightest thing about me this week was uh, last night was the Mariners game and the fact that I even cared at all, much less knew when it was 18 innings that that was unusual. Wow, I knew know that too. That's double what it should be. It was 0-0 zero, zero for 18 innings and finally the Astros won oh, by, by making... Win-win for me. Yeah, exactly. Houston. Yep. Go Houston. They, they I got, care. They got a run in the 18th inning. Also, fun fact, it was a home game. It was here. Uh, they stopped serving beer in the eighth inning because it's last call and they shut it down. They don't know how long the game is going to go. There are people who were there who had to suffer through 10 innings of baseball fucking sober. Oh my God. Can you imagine sobering <laughs> up and being like, <laughs> Why I still, are we still have here? five more innings to see. <laughs> well, you, th- but you, d- but not you knowing didn't. how long it was going to go. So it was like, there's an indefinite amount of baseball in front of me. <laughs> and it's the playoffs. So it was important. And anyway, Oh wow. Yeah. So I just, are we not, do we not move on? We lost. Is that, that bad? Was game, it was game three that we got shut out. That Oh sure. That means 
This, okay. I'm, straightest. This is the straightest thing about me, Kyle. <laughs> it's the most I think I've ever talked about baseball ever. Uh, What's I, mansplaining, but like in the right way, <laughs> where I don't know this and you're, I guess, just explaining. You're just explaining it to me. I don't know this. Yep. Straight-splaining. Yeah, okay. Uh, the gayest thing about me this week was uh, last Sunday after we recorded the show, I was still remote in Palm Springs and uh, my gay fraternity brothers and I went and saw marvelous Marilyn may i don't know what that is and uh she's like a lounge singer type oh. uh she uh, is more famous than just that she has the dubious distinction of appearing the most times to sing on the tonight show interesting she appeared 74 times on the tonight show Holy mostly shit. during the johnny carson years wow she kicked ass and i knew like every song almost and was singing along but like quietly because i didn't want to interrupt her yeah, and, yeah. and uh, she's just sassy and raunchy and she did these like kicks to some of the songs and i was like oh my god this woman in her 80s is adorable on theme she was born in 1928 that bitch was 94 Dang. and still just controlling a room and kicking ass it was fucking phenomenal why is it that i imagine all of these women i imagine doing a kick like i <laughs> imagine liza minnelli just doing a kick yeah. you know like that's what i can see these old women just like singing and kicking have you seen Kristen wig playing liza minnelli <laughs> trying to turn oh, the yes. light off <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> liza minnelli on uh, arrested development at the request of ron jeremy no ron <laughs> Whatever his name is. Ron Jeremy. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Je yeah. Jeffrey Tambor? Nope. No, Ron, the guy that does the voiceover. Ron Howard. Oh, Ron Howard. I got there. Got it. I didn't need you. All right. Uh, how about you? Uh, my gayest, got to keep it on the bros theme. Great. Whenever Billy Eichner comes up from now until the end of time, I'm going to be like... Your Twitter friend, Billy Eichner? He replied to me. I was just going to say, <laughs> you know, he replied to me. I was going to be like, we no long, we're old and we know none of us know who that is. And I'll be like, that's fine. He replied to me, though. Uh, my gayest is watching the movie Bros. Yeah. Uh, it was a very gay movie. Um, liked it. Yeah. Really funny. Had, it was uh, kind of heavy handed. I have some critiques, but I, but still very good. Go yeah. see it. I think it's worthwhile. Support, uh, support family. I guess. Support. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think it is. The, there is a value to voting with your dollar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. My straightest is, uh, I watched that with my dad because I was visiting my parents. My dad and I love watching movies. We watched that together. Then we watched a sci-fi movie that was oh. like three out of five stars. We, we, we're we fine with even mediocre sci-fi, like, but yeah. this terrible sci-fi movie that's just, you know, yeah. whatever student made that okay. movie was, you know, okay at its job. Uh, There's but, something sort of straight about sci-fi, but also not. But this like, this sci-fi, I like there is something like sci-fi and kind of like they can talk about cultural issues, including trans and queer this one did not do that. Yeah, okay, great. <laughs> this also, one... There's also Pew Pew Explosion sci-fi in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, leave us a voicemail with your gay sincerity to see if we want us to play yours. Uh, it, it would have gone right here if any of you had left us a voicemail. That's right. That's right. Please do it. Yeah. Um, the, that's it. That's Thank it? you to all these dead white ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I said, uh, when we were talking about this, I was like, oh no, she'll never get to hear the Angel Lansbury. We'll never know right. that we did this episode on her. That's right. That's right. But you said that maybe there's Spotify in heaven. There might be Spotify in heaven. Yeah. Hopefully she's, that's where she is. <gasps> they definitely have no Spotify's in hell for sure. Aww. <laughs> um, Thanks to Spotify for hosting <laughs> our podcast <laughs> um i would like to thank our super gap bridgers john crowley Stephen porch Crow crowley it doesn't matter steven you matter what am i doing Stephen porch host Osel, harry shaw josh copeland jonathan montanas forrest nail patrick martin james barrow steve L douglas explosive lasagna just jamie kevin henderson donald linsky thomas b dusty sands a e. coleman chris cachetorians and jerome york that's it this has been gayish from the chris cachetorian studios i'm mike johnson i'm kyle getz until next week be butch be fabulous be you see you next week bye bye This is Michael's mother. Look what they've done, Michael. She isn't happy. Look what the homosexuals have done to me.